Council Member Brennan. Present. Supervisor Long. Here. Supervisor Bennett. Supervisor Foy. Here. Mayor Morgan. Here. Supervisor Park. Here. Council Member Ramirez. Here. Council Member Sharkey. Present. Mayor Washburn. And Supervisor Saragosa. Here. Great. We have a quorum. Okay. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. Oh. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do we have any... Um, do we have the minutes of the meeting from June 14th? Any corrections? Any? Great, thank you. Second. And a second. Okay, any objections? Seeing none, well, unanimous. Uh, move to any uh, agenda review? Any, any changes, questions? Seeing none, we'll move through that to our uh, item six, our board comments. All right. We were all talked out from June 4th. Oh, there we go. Good. Just one quick one on the um, uh, last week, uh, um, Councilmember Sharkey and myself uh, testified, as did Mike, um, up at a CARB hearing regarding the missile, missile well, the missile test range yes. and the um, Oshkoing vessel channel of uh, Santa Barbara and the amendment to the CARB ruling of 2009 that addressed an issue of the um, ocean-going vessels uh, creating risk by going outside the Channel Islands to ferry through the missile test range and become target practice. Um, bottom line is that the amendment by CARB was an excellent amendment to address that issue to, to create a 24-mile um, uh, zone that then, in essence, should put them back in the, in, into the uh, uh, Santa Barbara Channel and and continue their excellent work, frankly, with the vessel um, uh, association and the and the industry and in, and in going to the um, clean fuel usage and that was the intent of the CARB hearing to clean up the air quality along the coast. Um, Mike addressed that in this this board's unanimous letter that was sent in support of uh, the amended action, and it was voted unanimously um, by the CARB members to support that. So it was a good step. Um, obviously benefits both our coastal corridor for clean air and also the, um, uh, the encroachment issue for the test range for the uh, Naval Base Ventura County. Mr. Sharkey, anything? You said it all. Yeah. So Car Thank you both for taking the time to go up there. I think it was very, both yeah. as you said, from economically, but also from air quality. It was, it was a huge win, so mm -hmm. good job. Mr. Morgan. So I'm, I'm glad to see now that some of those are still, of course, that want to use the bad stuff. We'll go out way around, but very few of those will now, huh? Yeah. And they'll, uh, one of the um, uh, creative things in the next step in the, the rural development for CARB will be looking at the um, uh, speed of the uh, vessels. And uh, Long Beach and... Um, LA have already moved to give incentives to the uh, transit operators to slow their vessels down and get a break on their berthing fees, basically, is as simple as I can put it. So anyway, I was appreciated that Mike was there. Um, he spoke again for this board and uh, gave good input on it. Interestingly enough, I think um, exponentially the difference of, of, uh, um, of the fuel burned in speed, I think, uh, was pretty amazing. Now, at our basin-wide meeting uh, last week, the numbers came out uh, going from 24 knots to 12 knots, reduced on one something like almost 70 percent, 60 or 70 percent. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, I mean, so in terms of, it just creates more, it, they're not getting, they're not doing anything, but, you know, better, they're just, well, the big problem has been getting to their to their uh, uh, their, their birthing times, and that's been the biggest. So right. it's nice to hear that the, uh, the 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 ports are going to be willing to work with them because mm -hmm. obviously everybody's going to be in the same boat. So. Right. In the same boat. Good. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> we cut. And, and right. there's already just just with the change in the clean fuel, the yep. tonnage mm -hmm. of, of cleaning up the air is I want to say eighty thousand. I don't know what we call what the figure was, but it was it was significant. It, it, it's an eighty percent reduction in diesel, uh, toxic diesel particulate and an eighty percent reduction in sulfur right. dioxide. Yeah. 
Already. And, uh, and what Wales percentage is that of our air pollution here in the county? Oh, you know what? <laughs> those are both the payment pollutants. I don't have those numbers in my off the top of my head. But it's, it's significant. When you look at sulfur dioxide, certainly uh, the largest source was the, the vessels plowing the coast. Mm -hmm. I thought one of the interesting comments that came out last week uh, from uh, Terry Dressler, who just retired in Santa Barbara, was that Santa Barbara had some of the cleanest air on record when the boats were outside. Now, recognizing it created another problem, but it was, it, while there wasn't direct data, they just said, hey, this time they were outside, the data's here, the air is clear, we've never seen it cleaner, and all of a sudden, so I think that was one of the huge ahas. So there was a, while it wasn't directly measured in terms of data, but uh, the fact that the overall data showed this uh, is a pretty good indication of why we were trying to address the boat issue, I think, more than anything else. And obviously we know the downstream costs of health issues and trying to explain that to folks and people don't see the boats here but yet the particulate matter is on shore and of course it then we've got those levels up it kind of it kind of burdens some of the folks that are in the business on shore because we already have this coming on shore so if we can address that we can certainly address some of these issues a little clearer Mr. Chair maybe also the other uh, good side of this uh, CARP thing is that it's going to help the uh, Naval Base Ventura County the encroachment issue and, you know, we have a tremendous amount of jobs and, and payroll, and, <coughs> and it helps, you know, the, the testing rings there tremendously, too. So that's the other side of it. And then quickly, I wanted to say that um, one of the, we have a huge opportunity here. Generally speaking, um, the environmental community certainly has been trying to get the boats to slow down. We have the blue whales. We've got a number of uh, uh, more um, wild migration inside the channel. So moving at 12 knots, you know, granted, if a big boat hits a whale, it's going to ship. ship. Yeah, you're right. That's, okay, there you go. It's a ship. You're right. A boat is... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, it's a ship for sure. Um, but it obviously gives the opportunity for uh, crustaceans and everybody to get out of the way, you know, the whales and everybody to be able to avoid that as opposed to uh, getting uh, ship strikes. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, before we leave that, since uh, you know, a couple of questions came up, I believe if you check the CARB website, it may still be up there, there are some graphs and charts that show where the plumes are and uh, the effect of, uh, of uh, the ships going outside the island and where that plume is and, and what the impacts are on shore. So if anybody's really motivated, you can check it on the CARB website and find that stuff. Nice. And, and one last thing, the, um, although this, they had a brief discussion um, on the, the next rulemaking for the reduction in speed, um, there was uh, concerns raised that it, uh, to be very cognizant of the unintended consequences of, again, possibly pushing vessels outside into the test range rather than getting their agreement to slow down. Staff recognized that. Chair, Chairperson Nichols did, so staff is already aware that they don't want to create what they did with 2009, the unintended consequence. So. So that will have to be addressed. Great. Well, thank you, Board, for the comments. Seeing no more, we'll move on to our next item. It's our public hearing regarding the adoption of the Air Pollution Control District's proposed fiscal year budget, 2011-2012. Mr. Viegas. Chair Brennan, members of the Board, I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. I'll keep this short because we went over our proposed budget in detail at our June 14th meeting. Mm -hmm. Excluding $300,000 for contingencies, the district is projecting a net cost of approximately $133,000. However, the proposed budget contains a conservative estimate of $109,000 in revenue from fines and penalties. When you look at past performance over the past five years, fines and penalties have averaged $300,000 per year. So in reality, the district is probably looking at an additional $190,000 in revenue from the source. Therefore, we should be looking at a balanced budget, and there's a chance that we'll actually see a net savings in the upcoming fiscal year. Total proposed expenditures are down by $165,000 from the current fiscal year. Salaries and benefits are reduced by approximately $130,000 due to staffing changes. Services supplies are up by $107,000, mostly due to an increase in the cost allocation plan where we pay for county services. Fixed assets are down by $143,000 from the current fiscal year. 
our revenues are expected to decrease by $140,000. And this is mostly because of the fact, under a state regulation, some older, higher-emitting diesel engines had to be removed from service during the past year, and now they're being replaced with cleaner diesels and lower emission fees. We also have lower revenue from our interest earnings just due to the state of the economy. We only have one increment to request, and once again, the district has $25,000 available for a motor vehicle incentive program. Approving of the funding today does not include actually approving the program. We would return to your board at a later date to, with an implementation plan. I'd just like to point out to your board that we have been receiving uh, interest in electric vehicle infrastructure projects from the County of Ventura's General Services Agency and the local Clean Cities Coalition, and that may be a very good use of the funds. Your board standing committee reviewed the budget at their March meeting and recommended adoption to your board. Your board's approval would also include adoption of the special revenue fund portion of the budget, and this fund handles our pass-through grants where revenue and expenditures are always balanced. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to take questions. Um. Member Ramirez? Uh, yes, thank you very much for that. I just have a question about, since we last met and discussed, any changes from the state or federal budget that you could uh, note? Uh, <laughs> well, I didn't get to read the article, but I saw the headline that we're headed for, an, it looks like, an all-cuts state budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on state subvention. It's, it's only $200,000, but it's, you know, it would be a significant cut to the district. Uh, the more troubling is if they tried to pull some of the DMV funds we receive and, and use those for other purposes, although they are pre uh, protected right now by current legislation. Uh, the federal budget, no, no updates since then. We're still waiting to see what happens with the federal grant reallocation. Thank you. Supervisor Pleasure of the board on this item. We've uh, reviewed this in Mr. detail Chairman, before. We've re like you say, we've reviewed this and asked a lot of our questions, and I think he's had to put up with our, our little uh, stuff. So I think today I'd like to move that we accept the staff's recommendation and pass this. I, I make that motion. Okay. Second by Member Sharkey. Okay. We'll do a roll call vote as this is a budget. Um, if you could, please. Supervisor Long. Yes. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Supervisor Foy? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. Supervisor Parks? Yes. Council Member Ramirez? Yes. Council Member Sharkey? Oh, yeah. Supervisor Saragossa? Yes. And Chair Brennan? Yes. And I would also note that the Air Pollution uh, Control District also benefited from the reduction in ISF fees that uh, occurred countywide. Yes. Good to see. Thank you, Board. We'll move to our next item. Mr. Villegas? Yes. Uh, today I have a Retirement Service Award for our Deputy Air Pollution Control Officer, Mr. Keith Duvall, if you'd like to come up. And, uh, well, this is headed close to it. We're, we're 48 hours from a very sad day for the district. We're also 48 hours from a very happy day for Mr. Duvall. So, <laughs> uh, Keith has, has been with the district nearly 30 years, and I think one of the reasons that the district is known as the pragmatic district on the coast it is Mr. Duvall. His leadership has always been there. He never lost sight of the quest to protect public health and improve air quality, but he also knew that setting appropriate fines for appropriate violations was a, a part of being a pragmatic district, and he certainly knows that there's times when there's mitigating circumstances to reduce a proposed penalty. He also knows there's times to turn over a case to the district attorney or the state attorney general. Uh, I'm going to miss him on a personal note. Uh, Mr. Duvall was my mentor. I, I worked for him when I started here at the district, and I don't believe I would have achieved my position and, and my career without the guidance of Mr. Duvall. Uh, he's going to be sorely missed here. A lot, a breadth of knowledge. He, he was a permit engineer. He managed the rule development uh, section and the compliance section. And, and probably his parting gift to the district was a big part of why we have such a large fund balance. When we hit dire financial straits about one year into my tenure, Mr. Duvall agreed to take over some additional divisions and allowed us to reduce our management uh, staffing levels, which was a huge cost savings to the district. And I think the rest of the employees, we all owe him a great, 
gratitude for that because they're secure in their positions now. We can concentrate on our mission, not worrying about finances. And with that, I just want to thank Mr. Duvall for his many years of service and great leadership here at the district. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. It, it's really been an honor to serve the Air Pollution Control District and your board, and especially the citizens of Ventura County. And I've always tried to keep that in mind that I was serving the citizens here. And being born and raised in Ventura meant a lot to me. Um, we've we've seen dramatic improvements in the county's air quality in the years that I've been here, and it's due to just a great team of people. A lot of people have been in and out of the district over the years that I've been here. And, a lot of hard-working professionals, and everybody was dedicated to cleaning up the county's air quality. And it's just a real honor to have been a part of that and, and to wake up in the morning and see the clear skies that we get so, so often. So thank you for your support. Your board was really a big part of that, going, supporting our rules and regulations and state regulations to you know, clean up ships and things like that and approving our rules and regulations. So thank you. Thank you. And now we will wait for an opening on the advisory board where you can probably sit in. Right? <laughs> Any comments? Yeah, I, I would like to say, uh, Mr. Vall, been a been a local resident for you know, as you said, born and born and raised here. And um, uh, just just two things. One, I really want to thank you for reminding us it's about the mission. You know, and that's cleaning up the air. And a lot, lots of times in a bureaucracy, you can get you can get lost in all kinds of other things. But from the very beginning, when uh, I spoke with you many years ago, it was way before I came on the board. Um, it was real clear you were real focused on that. And two, um, not everybody gets to work at a job that has such a clear public benefit. And uh, I hope you feel good about uh, having. Uh, um, both had that opportunity and been able to play a, a real big role in that. So thank you and good luck uh, and uh, keep uh, the good of Ventura County uh, uh, as part of those things that you're working on with your free time now that yeah. you have out there. Set. But thank you very much, Keith. You've been great thank to work you. with. Really appreciate thank it. You. Mr. Chair, if I might too, thank you, Keith. Um, and well said, Mike. Pragmatic. Um, but I've always appreciated that as has been said, you, you knew the mission, the work, the um, sometimes it's very tough work. Uh, in the early days, we had significant uh, disagreements and always willing to sit at the table and listen and work through those with the regulated community in addition to keeping um, the goals in mind. So I appreciated your calm demeanor, your ability to listen and work with the citizens of the county. Thank you. Thank you. Good public service. Thank you. Thank you. Michael moves to the next item, public hearing uh, regarding adoption of proposed new rule 2613, new source review. Yes, prevention of significant deterioration, or as we refer to it as PSD, is a sister companion to the federal, it's a federal program, and it's, it's kind of a sister to the federal new source review program. But there are some differences. New source review applies to pollutants for which you're designated non-attainment. So in Ventura County for ozone, federal new source review deals with reactive organic compounds and nitrogen oxides. Prevention of significant de deterioration deals with pollutants where you actually attain the standard or are unclassified. So it deals with, at the federal level, sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and other applicable pollutants. It's similar to new source review in that if you have a major new source or a major modification, you're required to implement best available control technology for those pollutants subject to PSD. It differs from new source review in that new source review requires you to provide emission reduction offsets for any increase after you already have applied best available control technology. What PSD does is it requires an analysis to make sure that there's not a significant degradation of air quality with that attainment pollutant. The other main difference is the pollution thresholds. Currently, federal new source review would apply to a major source, and we're currently a serious non-attainment area, at a threshold of 50 tons per year for ROC or NOx. 
with PSD for the applicable pollutants, for most of the applicable pollutants, the threshold for a major modification or a new major facility is 250 tons per year. With the exception of greenhouse gases, where the threshold, as you're aware, is 100,000 tons per year of greenhouse gases. Currently, for Ventura County, this program is implemented by the U.S. EPA out of their office in Region 9 in San Francisco. At this time, there are no stationary sources in Ventura County subject to PSD requirements or that have a PSD permit. And since I've been at the district, we have not done a PSD permit, and that's 22 and a half years. So these are quite infrequent. Even with the addition of greenhouse gases, we're not seeing a PSD source in this foreseeable future in this county. However, EPA is encouraging local agencies to take over implementation of this program. The most straightforward way to do that is for us to adopt the federal requirements by reference, and that's what we're proposing to do with new rule 2613. We would be repealing our existing PSD rule, which is really a reference stating that if you have a PSD facility, you need to get your permit from EPA. That's 2610. We would repeal that and take over implementation. There are several benefits to having the district run the program locally, and there is the potential that we could have a, a large new PSD facility in the county. I mean, right now we have two aging power plants in Ormond Beach and Mandalay where they're running into the once-through water issue, the once-through cooling issue. And there's the possibility that in the future, when you need electrical generation, you know, Gen Allen may look at saying, Let, let's replace those boilers with state-of-the-art turbines to generate electricity as a baseload facility. That would probably become a PSD facility. One of the benefits to having the district do the permitting is timeliness. Currently, it takes several years for EPA to complete a PSD permit. And that there's that's kind of a twofold thing. They don't do these permits very often, and they have very limited staff. And matter of fact, I don't know if you heard of the Jobs and Permitting Act that went to, was recently passed by the House dealing with outer continental shelf permits. That stemmed from the fact that a PSD permit took too long off the coast of Alaska. We could do the permitting in a much more timely manner at, at our level. The other major advantage is that if there were an appeal of a PSD facility, and, and then many times there are because they, they're very large facilities and some residents would you know, potentially appeal any approval. At the federal level, when EPA is implementing it, and any appeal goes to the Environmental Appeals Board in Washington, D.C., and it can take a couple of years to get a decision on that permit action. If we were locally implementing it, it would go to the district's hearing board, and you'd probably have a resolution, resolution in, a, in a matter of months. There is a financial impact. Well, yes. it's, it's a minor financial impact. If the district does the permitting, we would assess our permit processing fees. One thing, EPA does not have a mechanism to ex assess any fees for permit processing. But it, it's, it's more than offset by the fact that you'd receive your permit years earlier. And if you were building a new power plant and you had to pay the district for the permit processing, but you could get it a few years earlier, hands down, and that's one thing the advisory committee saw, that would be a better outcome for the regulated community. The other thing that's really not in there is EPA might not assess fees. However, with their limited staff, where the, if you came into the district with a permit application, we would do the best available control technology analysis, for example. Whereas if you're going into EPA with their limited staff, that might fall to the permittee to hire a consultant to do that. So you might not be paying EPA, but you'd probably be paying an environmental consultant. And to put it bluntly, our, our service rates are definitely going to be lower than an outside consultant. Uh, in summary, we had a workshop in uh, September of last year, uh, no negative comments, and on April 26th of this year, the advisory committee unanimously recommended approval of the proposed rule action. It, it all sounds good, Mike. Uh, giving a faster, I like the idea of getting it done faster where they don't have to wait two years. Uh, that helps business. Uh, it helps get things accomplished. Um, will the EPA, though, still have a final say on it? I mean, even if we get this through and appeals and, and appeals over, it's all done. Will the EPA still have a final say in it? They would be reviewing the permit action. Again. They would review the back analysis, but there's time frames on their review. 
So once we, it would be very similar to our Title V program. We, we go out and we say, this is what we, we're going to do. We're going to issue this permit. They get 45 days to get back to us. There are time frames for EPA review on these permits. The reason I'm asking that question, you just don't want to put one part of bureaucracy on top of another and still calls it to your time frame. Uh, if it is, it's fine. We're doing it. Let them do it and let them take the cost and let's not do it. But if we're making it faster and more efficient, that's a different story. Yeah, we are making it. would definitely be more timely. Member Ramirez. Thank you, Mr. Villegas. Uh, I, I would just like to comment, uh, because you've discussed the two power plants on the Oxnard beaches, um, that uh, speaking for myself and not for any other member of uh, our city council, I think that I would like for you not to permit it <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> I would like to share the burden with the other uh, jurisdictions of the county, just as an aside, because it does impact our air and Oxnard does have the burden, and we also have a third one uh, attempting to go in. So um, anything that that continues in Oxnard, I, I think you might, you would definitely hear from uh, the residents of Oxnard. Well, I would assume there'd be an appeal if, if right. there was a proposal such as that. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no further questions, pleasure of the board on this item. Okay. Second by Member Sharkey. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, unanimous. Thank you, board. Appreciate it. Um, Move to item 10. Well, we're going we're gonna to get our money's worth I'm, out of you before we I'm let back. you go, aren't we? Okay, good. <laughs> Chubb Brennan, members of the board. Uh, Keith Duvall for the PCD. Uh, the district's hearing board is comprised of uh, five members appointed by your board. And by state law, those members have to include two public members, a uh, member from the legal profession, a doctor, and a professional engineer. Uh, the term of the professional engineer expired uh, January 1st. Uh, we sent a memo to your board. Uh, we published an article in our Skylines uh, 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 publication, and we issued a press release announcing the availabil availability for people to... Uh, uh, apply for this position. Uh, the only applicant for the position was uh, Mr. Gary Gasparino. Uh, Mr. Gasparino is a registered professional engineer uh, with extensive uh, experience in civil engineering, and uh, he has served on the hearing board since 2005. Uh, your board's standing committee recommended that Mr. Gasparino be appointed uh, to fill the engineer position and the term of this position will be uh, through December 31st, 2013. Uh, therefore, we're recommending the appointment of Mr. Gasparino to the uh, APC hearing board. Great. Thank you. Pleasure of the board. Second. Uh, Second. Tie goes to the runner. Mr. Morgan, I believe one. Okay. Uh, any, one. any opposition? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you, Keith, again. <laughs> the next item, uh, donation of surplus air monitoring shelter to the California Departments of Parks and Recreation. Yes, in an effort to streamline our monitoring operations and reduce costs to the regulated community, the Ventura monitoring site has been shut down. This action allows the district to reduce our costs and staff time with no in adverse impact on our ability to protect public health. It also means we now have a surplus monitoring site shelter. The California Department of Parks and Recre Recreation has asked that we actually donate the shelter to them. It's currently at Emma Wood State Beach. We have no use for the shelter and it's very poor condition due to the fact it's been exposed to salt air for several years. Staff estimates the shelter has a surplus value of approximately only a $100. And also by donating the shelter it would Reduce cost to the district in the fact that we ha might not have to haul it away. That's sort of <laughs> <laughs> significant savings to us. Okay. Therefore, we're recommending that your board authorize us to donate this uh, shelter to state parks. Okay, Supervisor Parks moved approval and second by uh, Supervisor Long. Question, question, question. Okay. Why would the state want it? Uh, they, they're they're going to use it. To, I found out yesterday they're going to use it to keep uh, lost and found items. Yeah, shelter, it's in bad shape. Okay. 
Well, it, it, it's, it's in bad shape when you're trying to protect electronic equipment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, it's currently sealed up, but structurally, it's okay. going to need to. It would need to be replaced within a year or two. If I remember, it's like a 40-foot roll-off or something. Yes. Yeah, it's just something. It's not. It's just a roll-off container that's obviously rusted an awful lot. But obviously, our equipment's been deteriorated, so and been taken off it. So, great. Any opposition? See none. Carries. Thank you. Great job on saving us way more than a hundred bucks hauling it off and getting a permit to dispose of it and yada yada yada. You know how that goes. Should thank you. It to him. <laughs> hey, item. Next item. Uh, this is. Um, oh boy, I know how much we love getting together. So we're going to have to ha cancel a couple of gatherings. I uh, don't all sound so excited. Okay. <laughs> I, I know there's no opposition to this, this item. Great. Carries unanimously. And uh, item uh, 13, receive and file application. Second. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Zaragoza won just by a hair there. And see no opposition. That item carries also. And item 14, receive and file. Second. Second. Okay. And we had no standing committee. Uh, uh, motion by M Member Morgan and second by Supervisor Zaragoza. And, and we had no standing committee meeting, right? No standing committee, and we are done with the minutes. Tell, uh, tell the uh, work of this board until September. Thank you very much.